All right, I'm James here again with El Paso English Cafe. We... Okay, I'm James here again with El Paso English Cafe. What I'd like to talk to you about now is sound number five in English and sound number six. Um, sound number six is very common in languages throughout the world, okay? We've got it in Spanish and you've also got it in a lot of languages. It's uh, one of the most common vowel sounds. How common? This common. If you have a sore throat, you have an infection, and you want a doctor to look at your throat, if you go to the United States, or Mexico, or Thailand, or Zimbabwe, or Nigeria, or Sweden, I don't care where you go, the doctor is going to ask you to do something. The doctor is going to say to you, open your mouth and say, ah. It's the same sound. I've tried this. I know. I have Chinese students who have confirmed with me that in China, the doctor says, open your mouth and say, ah. Why is that? Because it's the most open sound. Your mouth is wide open, ah. Your throat is open, ah. Your tongue is down and out of the way, ah. There is nobody on earth, well, can't be completely <laughs> categorical. It's uncommon to find a person who has difficulty with ah. Ah is very easy. Okay, so we've got ah. That's sound number six in English. Now, here's, um, here's something you may be interested in seeing, and this is something, look, in English, the most common letter for indicating ah is the letter O. Okay, now I know that, that, is, that that's the source of some difficulty for my Spanish speakers because O doesn't sound like A. Ah. O is a different thing. Yes, in English each vowel letter has a double identity and other identities after that. Right, the O in English is most commonly used to indicate A. Ah. It's not the letter A. The letter A in English indicates very often sound number five, which is close to sound number, excuse me, sound number six, but it's not the same, okay? Here is one of my uh, grave disappointments with the IPA as well. The IPA uses a form of the letter A to indicate A, ah, that doesn't help me. That excuse me. That doesn't help me speak, uh, teach English to Spanish speakers because it is reinforcing an association from Spanish that actually needs to be de-emphasized. You need to break to some extent that association. We don't want. Uh, well, let's see. In English, if your only association with the letter A is the sound A. Ah, the approximations you make will confuse your speakers. Okay, so here we go. So this is ah in Spanish, ah in English. The word here is mop. Ah, ah, ah. Does Tom mop for mom? Tom, mop, mom. All spelled with the letter O in English. Okay, here's some more examples. On, stop, pot, pop, pond, drop, lock, bob. All of them with the letter O. So Please, develop that association, letter O with the sound ah. It's not exclusive. It's not the only association you need to know with letter O, but it is, but it is an important association. Okay, now let's talk about how sound number five is different from sound number six. It's similar, but it's different. There are many, 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 many dozens of common words in English with the sound number five, ah, and you may cause confusion if you always or often substitute this, this sound ah. It's not a bad approximation. It is an approximation that will allow you to communicate in English. However, if you're going to become excellent at English, if, if you're going to avoid many confusions, it, it's very helpful to develop this sound ah. Okay? It's not ah, it's ah. Now, I don't know if you can see the difference uh, that I make with my mouth. Here's sound number six, ah. Here comes 
ah, 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 ah. Now watch my tongue. Ah, six, ah, five. Here it is again. Ah, 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 ah. Do you see my tongue coming up? Okay, look for that. My tongue will come up. Six, the tongue is on the, on the floor of my mouth. It's way down. On five, the tongue is coming up in the back. Ah, ah. Okay, there it is. Now, you also may notice something about my lips. For ah, number six, ah, my lips, my mouth opens all the way, my lips are relaxed. Ah, ah, ah. My lips come back to some extent. Ah, 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 ah. So tongue up, lips back, ah. Ah, ah has tension. Ah sounds like someone is attacking you, gonna choke you. Ah, ah. If a baby is crying intensely, a baby is not making a relaxed sound. Do babies cry like this? Wah, wah. No, they don't. They don't. Babies cry with ah, wah, wah. Okay? They do. Listen to a baby. A baby makes English sound number five. Okay, so here we go. Uh, what else can we do for you? Let's look at uh, a couple of words that, some names that uh, get confused if you confuse what the letter indicates and if you, uh, if you haven't developed the ability to distinguish listening sound number five or the ability to, um, to speak uh, sound number five distinct from sound number six. So look at, look at these names. Okay, this requires ah. This also requires ah. This is Danny. Okay, now Spanish speakers will use sound number six as an approximation, and when they see this, often the result will be sound number six, and it sounds like Donny. If you put in sound number six here, your English speaker will misinterpret it usually as Donny. This with an O is Donny. This with A is Danny. Danny. Ah. Danny. Danny. Danny, get in here. Danny. Danny. Okay? This is Donny. Donny, get in here. Donny. Donny. See? <laughs> okay. So we've also got, uh, this is a girl's name. This name is Tammy. Comes from Thomasina or Tamara. This is Tammy. Ah. Tammy. This is Tommy. Tommy. This is sound number six. Ah. Sound number five, ah, Tammy, Tammy, Tommy, Tommy, okay? Well, I hope I haven't uh, frightened anybody. I'm using my loud voice today, but uh, that's the difference between five and six. Five is ah, tension, ah, okay? Lips back, tongue up, change in your throat as well. I, I was very proud of some students. I was, I was asking them if they could see the difference between five and six. Some of the students said, yeah, yeah, your throat. You changed your throat. Right. Uh, if you notice the change in the throat, you're, way, <laughs> you're, you're on top of this, okay? Um, otherwise, um, otherwise, watch. Ah, five. Ah, five. Ah, six. Ah, ah. You hear ah in Italian operas. Oh, 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 oh. You don't hear ah in an Italian opera. Ah. No, you won't hear it. Okay, you hear five, you hear six. Ah, you don't hear ah. Okay, as too ugly to include in an Italian opera. Okay, so here, uh, let's see. I've starred a couple of these words because if you change the pronunciation of lock, you get if you put a, a number five in here, you get lack. Okay, there are pairs of words that are distinguished only by the change in the vowel sound. So changing the vowel sound often will confuse the listener. So here is uh, lock. Uh, you change it, you get lack. Here is pond. Uh, you change it, you would get panned. Here is pot. You change it, you get pat. In the same way, back you change it, you'll get Bach, which is a kind of beer. Okay, it's not common vocabulary, but it exists in English. Uh, this tap, 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 if you change that to sound six, it sounds like top, top of my head, 
tap my tap me on the top of my head. Okay, I'm just confusing everyone now. Please come back, see another video which I will make less confusing. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying El Paso English Cafe. Are you?